hear from those groups, that's one thing. If it's to hear from everything, what, what is it? Because it is your time that he is trying to program. Couldn't you do it more than, say, have two retreats? Uh, that's what I was getting ready to say. Read my mind. <laughs> you could have, have two. I mean, we could have one. And you want it in depth. You don't want to shout. I mean, if I sit down and Brian and these guys and ladies back there spend 30 minutes, they're really not going to be able to tell me a whole lot. What if we looked at, going back to the, to the dates that we had uh, thrown up there, um, locally, like in this room, we do, we enter, y'all entertain uh, what I would call operations and service overviews from the departments. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, we could use this meeting for that. That's for that's one department at a time. Yeah. 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 Let's do that right here. Yeah. One department. Yeah. 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 What? That's a year we'll spend. Right. But that's yeah. what, you know, well, everybody's got different interests, but that's yeah. what would interest me. And we don't want to stay in any department. Somebody no, needs to some kind of way, or they want to know about what I know. Can we not, I have, what we, what so can we, we not just do that piece at a strategic planning meeting mm -hmm. and still do the other piece at the goal setting with regards to the budget, like the format that you have? So sequence two, for one to three departments at a strategic to give a, a program based on operations and service overview. That's and schedule to the year. Right. That'd be good. Right. I'm, I'm good <laughs> with that. Yeah. Right. And then we can still do and then do you, then do you, what do you do with a retreat or do you not need a retreat? Well, I, I think the retreat is, yeah, well, back. If the way I look at it, this, and the way uh, uh, Larry's trying to position it, it, it's obvious that it's for some help to these department heads to figure out, tell us what they need and and what it's going to cost, and then, you know, if in fact we all agree oh, on that, 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 that's what you're really trying to accomplish. Yeah, some years I've, I've felt mashing a teeth by council members that they didn't feel like they got enough information early enough to be able to really weigh in and, and give guidance that it felt like we, the staff, were rushing things, which I don't necessarily agree with, but, but you know, we bring information to y'all in April and, and we're ready to get the budget going. Right. Yeah, because we've got some roughly February. 60 days before uh, that. The next two more months, we would beat the door out already. That's better. And, and I would agree, you know, a lot of times, that, you know, they might think that they're getting a budget on April and May and they're voting on it in June. You know, they don't have a time. But, you know, I think what, I'm not meaning to speak for anybody else on this panel, but, uh, you know, it just seems to me that they want some input about the direction of the department. <coughs> they may like to add something to that, but, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be done in these two days. You know, what Brian's doing and, and, and wants to do and, and, and continue to do is an hour right here. And he's already got out 30 minutes of time on this thing that we have. So I think we have enough time to explain to Liam what he's doing, why he's doing it, and what he knows and the hell does. Well, well he's only had to do that <coughs> one time in 12 months. I like to be informed if I'm sitting around or, or sitting and talking to people and, and you hear a lot of people be negative about your police department or your gas, electrical, uh, but if you know what's going on and I know our people know what they're doing, then if I know for a fact that uh, I know what I'm talking about, then I feel very comfortable in engaging with this. And uh, I, I just, I, I'm really, and I'll brag again, I think we've got good people. I think for a town this size, and just recently we got Interstate Highway, we've done things that most cities could not have done uh, with the resources we had. And I, I just think the more we know about it, and the more we can speak informative, the better we look. Fred, if I hear you say do it on Tuesday like I've heard Mr. McGee say, is that what you said on, on, on the strategic like we're doing now? No, I say we stick to this format that Harry has recommended on this Monday and Tuesday, and and this uh, add-on, uh, more in-depth, uh, be done at another time. So like it's in this right here, so like I like yeah, in this right here, right. you know. Uh, right. Well, that's right. what I'm hearing you say. That's right. yeah. that good with you, Lee? Yeah. Good. Okay. Are you put that in motion? I do. 
So next, if there's no, no other questions about retreat goal setting, I'd like to invite Ryan up to talk about uh, the Winchester Recreation Complex Identification Signage and its revisions. I have some pictures just in case you guys can look at for reference. Um, October 1st, 2019, City Council meeting. Council approved revisions for community input for the Winchester Recreation Complex Identification Signage. Uh, prior uh, to initiating those changes, staff seeks verification from council. The revisions illustrated on the attached draw represent changes approved by council. This matter was tabled on the tw uh, November 12, 2019 City Council meeting to allow for additional community input uh, for the city's naming of public facilities and lands in recognition of the individual policy. In addition to that, we did meet with the Winchester Neighborhood Committee, um, and I believe that was passed to this committee. Um, and this is just for information purposes only. This is what, this is what we uh, are, are uh, proposing to sign to look like. And uh, as soon as we get approval from the I think we can go ahead and, uh, and move forward with that. So Ryan, you're not asking for affirmation? Motion? Yes. Motion to approve. Second. Well, just try and call. <laughs> uh, I believe around $600 to, yeah. to, to
because um, it, it will kind of rotate through each, each facility, and it's an ongoing project that we expect it to grow as we kind of continue along with it. Um, there's value in art. Is the first slide. This is this the background is uh, at Sutton Park Community, which is going to be the first one that we're going to that we're going to we're going to go with. Um, this is an opportunity for kids to express themselves. Um, walls can be silent, and walls can speak. Right now, they're not saying much, um, it, it, and it's also it can be representative of the community that the, that the center's in. And right now, there's just white walls, and I think that there's an opportunity there um, to, to provide these 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 art murals to establish a facility identity. Um, and also foster positive environments. They feel like it's a warm, it's a warm environment. They go in there and it, 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 it symbolizes things that, that are in the community. And the next couple slides, you'll see kind of what our, what our art teacher, now we're trying to make these facilities look better, so I was not involved in the design process. Um, an, art, an art teacher was, so, um, um, and the, uh, the, the students at the Piedmont Middle School. Um, every passive space can be used to establish an optimistic mindset in children by adding character and content to the facility. And then these murals will be unique and site-specific, and they'll, they'll focus on the, the culture and the tradition of the neighborhood that the community center is located in. This is the wall. So at Sutton Park, we were proposing two murals, more or less. One that's, that's, that's a focal point, and one that is, that, is, that is smaller, but kind of involves the, the kids. Both will involve the kids, but one is more of an investment for the kids that, 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 that it grows as the, as the facility. As the, as the kids move on, you know, their brothers and sisters might come in and they can come back and say that's, that's something that, that we did. Um, so this is the space where the big, the, the larger mural is going to be. It's 15 foot by, I think, 9 feet to the bottom of the, of the computers. So if you, I'm sure you've been to Sutton Park, so you walk into the, 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 the meeting room area, which is also our after school program, and we rent that also for, for meeting rooms. It also adds, I think, aesthetically, when we have rentals in there, because one of the concerns our staff had uh, was that people might not be able to the rent. So I think that with this, with this, um, with this mural, it still it, it adds to the aesthetics as, as a rental, as a rented facility as well. So that's just kind of a snapshot. So this is what we are um, suggesting as far as the large mural at at uh, at uh, Sutton Park. Now Sutton Park is a transitional transi transitional neighborhood with multicultural families. Um, there's a lot of open space and trees in Sutton Park. There's a lot of natural beauty. There's, the, there's, there's a lot of diversity. Uh, so this, this theme uh, emphasizes the positive attributes of the neighborhood with images of natural beauty, stability, and bright happiness. Uh, potentially encouraging words would also be included in the mural, and, and the kids can decide on that as well. So how this, what happens, and I'll kind of go into a little bit more, um, the art teacher will, will, will outline this. The kids are going to be act, actually designing the actual drawings, the actual butterfly, and that kind of stuff. They're painting, they're painting it in. And I'll go into kind of more detail on that as well. Um, so this is kind of what it would, a little bit better picture of kind of what it would look like uh, in, that, in that area. Um, again, it's a, it's a nine, I put five feet, but I think it's a nine feet by 15 feet wall behind the computer area. Um, and the mural would wrap around existing mini, so we wouldn't take anything, anything out. It would just kind of, kind of grow into the, to the existing community. <coughs> So that's kind of what it would look like with that, that Southern part. Not kind of, that's pretty close to what it would look like. And then the, the, the youth piece that, that grows and is flexible uh, would, be, would be this one. This is the wall between the kitchen and the, the entryway into the lobby area where you go into the gym. Um, and this provides, this helps kids, you know, invest in their community center. It's about ownership. They have something that, they, that they've done. And these little circles and stuff will have their, their handprint inside of them. Uh, so, you know, as we move on, we can grow this, and, all, and also, there's two other walls that eventually, if we run out of space here, we can still provide space. If you want this to be an ongoing project that we do every single, every single year, flowing, and, and so the branches could extend. The branches could extend. Branches. We can, we can reevaluate re how we grow this as well. It could, it, you know, they're, they're, they're designing it so it, does, it, so it can be flexible. Right. Um, the tree symbolizes the, uh, the, the idea of strength. Uh, in diversity, it shows community growth, it's people growth, and people own their communities. For children, their hands <coughs> their name will be a witness that they were there, and Sutton Park is there. So that's a smaller space, it's nine and a half feet wide, and I want to say nine feet tall, I believe. Um, and then, so the nuts and bolts of this whole project is that there's going to be five to eight middle school students <coughs> from Piedmont Middle that will come on a, on a certain art day, on a Saturday. Uh, we'll make it a special event, one of our events. 
uh, that we do. So it's not going to just be one day kids show up on the Monday and it's pain. They're going to be involved in it. We're going to split it up into three different age groups. There'll be a morning, a morning session for the smaller for the smaller kids, and it'll be, there'll be other activities going on that's age appropriate. And then there'll be you know for the for the middle aged kids and then for the older kids. And each one has a little bit more difficult uh, process uh, involved. Um, the art teacher who is our partnership is Margaret James at Piedmont Middle. Um, she um, she will be the one. She she designed this you know with, with our with our guidance. Um, you know, we provide her with information on how we how we feel the theme should look, um, and then um, we will rotate these through um, each facility. Being Sutton Park first, Winchester second, Jerry shoot third. Those can switch. That's just kind of what we we, we plan on doing. And um, she will um, she will. They haven't designed the ones for Jerry shoot Winchester yet. This is just the only one done. But we have full intentions of doing that. Of those three, um, as we move forward. Question. Yes. Um, are the center directors involved in any way in helping you to uh, say what the community is about, what the history of the community is about the culture of the community? I would think that they would have some input because, you know, they work with people every day. And the second question, uh, could uh, Monroe Bill not be involved? It's just a little strange that you have to bring back from the county in to let they could do a collaborative effort. <laughs> Moving forward for the next two, we can absolutely include Monroeville. That, that, that's not a problem at all.